come in, sir. There we go. Yeah, we got to practice. Guys, if you're in the Dallas area, I got to give a little plug real quick. If you're in the Dallas area on this Saturday, 6.30 p.m., make sure you come to the All Things Theology, the Adoption Concert. <laughs> Not all things. There'll be, there'll be uh, Heritage Grace, hymns. My brother Jared Miller will be performing. And also, I will be doing some songs on the new album. I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, let's see. But yeah, come on down if you're in the area. Um, I don't know, man. You're, 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 you're muted. Uh, I mean, you're, you're good on my side. I don't know if you got to mute yourself or... Uh, you're good on my side. Let me tell you something, I love getting people like this in the debate. Oh, say theology. Let me tell you, it took forever to get this man on live. He would be running from me left and right. They blocked me, they put me in timeout, they put me in all these little things, these little moderators. Now I got him. The crazy thing about it is, he don't even know that I exposed him. He don't even know who I am. There you go. I think, you, I think I hear you now. What's going on, brother? Can you hear me? Yes, up? How you doing, man? Hey, we don't want to see your forehead, man. Show, your, show that face, brother. Hey, you don't want to see my ugly face. <laughs> hey, well, I go live every week, so people got to see this. So. <laughs> I got you. What's going well, on? I believe you believe in the false teachings, right? Well, yeah, that, you know me already. that's your belief. I, I do not know you. Yeah, you do. You uh, very well. Uh, first time talking to you. All right. Never heard this voice before, huh? Not that I recall, so. Gotcha. So you believe in the Trinity and you believe in one saved, always saved, huh? Let's start with the first thing, so let's not put multiple topics at one. Let's argue one thing at a time. So, yes, I do believe that the Trinity. Trinity? Can you find the Trinity in the Word of God? You mean like the word? Like the word and the uh, actual one God, three people. I mean, that's what you believe in, right? You, you, want, you want that verbatim or the concept? Yeah, I mean, that's what you believe, right? What does the Trinity believe? One God, three people? Is that correct? Well, you're denying it, so you should know what we believe, right? Absolutely, I know what you believe. So you're, you're asking me to show the word? Oh, I mean, you. in order to believe something, in order to be confident in your belief system, which is a man-made theology, uh, it never came from the word of God, it came from the third century. So if you believe in the Trinity, you believe in this one God, three people, you got to find it in the scriptures. It says important as it is written. So can you show me Bible in the in the scriptures? Bible just means book, holy right. book. So, so, you, so you're okay with the concept of Bible? I the holy Bible, hold, hold I call on it second. the holy scriptures. Okay, but, so you would, you would reject the Bible, but... Bible just means book, man. You, right. You're playing semantics. No, because uh, what I'm saying is you got to define, we have to define our terms. So if you want me to find the word Trinity, obviously, yes. I don't know, I would say that's that's not what we're arguing about. But if you allow the concept, oh, I could definitely prove that. Oh, okay. Well, prove both. How about that? Well, <laughs> prove the Bible's in the Bible. I didn't say the Bible was in the Bible. I, you, you assume that I thought that or I think that, but that's well, you, not what I think. You told I me the Holy Scriptures because it's not in the Word you, of God. You told me to prove, you said prove, bro. You believe God is omniscient? Yes. Omnipotent, sh all that sh stuff. Sh show me that in the Bible. No problem. Revelations? Okay. Hold on one second. Y you know what? Uh, how about this? I'll give, I'll give you what you want, okay? I'll, I'll show you. I'll demonstrate yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to seek this okay. one God, three people that y'all believe okay. in that so, came from the Catholics. That's your that assertion. Infiltrated the Christian churches. The, 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 the doctrine of the Trinity long existed, uh, Roman Catholic. So you, you're not, even, not in the Word of God. It oh, never. Okay. Could, it, Hold on, sir. It, it never, you're never doing a lot of up. talking, but you're demanding I prove something. You're making a lot yes, of assertions. Absolutely. Fine. Doing, so, hold on. Calm down. Calm down. I'm perfectly fine. One, one thing you stated. One trouble. thing you just stated that was actually historically an error. <laughs> Why do people always think I'm, I'm, I'm upset because uh, because I, I talk louder? You know, this is the way I talk, man. I, I came from uh, South Florida. There's a lot of New Yorkers, and they speak loud. I mean, that's just the way I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you had to speak loud to get your point across, you know, or for people to hear you. 
So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just who I am. I don't change. I, ain't, I mean, I, I speak this way to everyone. It's crazy. So, so you're wrong there in your church history, too. Do the Catholics believe in uh, Trinity? They also believe things you believe. So I don't know what that means. That that doesn't also that, believe what I believe. I don't yeah. believe in no Catholics. Don't even know the word of God. Do you believe God exists? God exists. Yeah. Of course, there's a God, but our God ain't the Catholics. But hold on. So our do the God Catholics. Ain't your so, God. so so the point you I don't even <laughs> how can how can you hold say hold that on, Jesus sir. Christ is God but not Father God? What kind of sense that make? Because he's not the father. How many so fathers he's are there? God, but he's not father God. How many fathers is it? How many father gods is there? You know what I'm saying? There's only one God. And his name is Jesus Christ, man. It's because of the invisible spirit of the Father God lives and dwells in Jesus, making him God, who is the image and the body of God. You know, I sit here with these foolish people, these theologians and all this other stuff. Notice he ain't bring up no verses to back up what he's saying. They run it. They run it. They always run it. And then you, watch when you take up to Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6, how they start going into their theology and their cult, their philosophy and all the other stuff. Now you're getting what the Trinity is. Yes, you finally catching me. I already know what the Trinity is. <laughs> so why are you shocked? So at Jesus' I'm not baptism. About so so why, how, I'm asking a simple question. How can Jesus be God but not God the Father? Explain that. Because God is triune. Let me explain this to you real quick. The <laughs> there is no scripture on this planet that has triune in it. There is no scripture on this planet that has trinity in it. There is no scripture on this planet that believes that there is one God and three people. One God and three persons. The, pl uh, the plural version of person is uh, people. So there's no scripture that says this, and this is where you take these people to, these, these theologians and these philosophers and all this other stuff. Just take them to the word of God. Listen, I couldn't, I'm, I couldn't wait to get this man in a live debate and just show you how foolish he is. He always over here exposing everybody. He exposing himself. He supposed to have a scripture. In fact, if you're going to believe in something, it's got to be according as it is written. Come use your philosophy and all your Greek and all the other stuff. I don't care nothing about that stuff. We're going to stay to the uh, what the Holy Scriptures say. And if you can't find it, you can't believe in it. And it's a fairy tale. You in the Word of God. Find the <laughs> Bible in the Word of God. Uh, you're, 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 it's very it's, silly. Back to that. You're, you're saying things that are not in the Word of God. I know they're not in the Word of God. There's no triune. There's no trinity. There's no one God, three people. Y'all made this up in your heads. And where did it come from? The third century. All you got to do is Google where it came from. Or we can actually do historical work. And uh, we can allow the... Historica. Historical work. Historical came from man-made. Man. Man taught that. Church fathers. I don't care nothing about what no church father says. All I care is what God said in the Holy Scriptures. Foolish. Oh, historical. Let me put my, my, my two fingers up here. Well, historical. Can we have a conversation? Because you, you, you're doing a lot of bantering and stuff. We can have somebody else on who can actually have a conversation. This is where they run because they uh they starting to realize you know what you're talking about. And one scripture says the wicked flee when no man pursued it, but the righteous are as bold as lions. So once they start to realize that you know what you're talking about, they'll run. And you're going to see them run in the end. Watch this. I mean, if you want to run, that's fine. But I'm just looking for this one God, three people that you look the reason he laughed because he knew what I was saying was true. <laughs> See, I, I, it's not my first debate. This is not my first time where these people run. Man, I love to get philosophy teachers in here. Oh, man, I love to break that pride. Yeah, I'm perfectly good. So, you going to let me answer it? you going to let me answer it? Absolutely. We okay, so, I, I've been trying to answer it. The Bible says clearly that there is only one God. But the Bible also says that there are three persons. There's only one God. Yes, but you're assuming you know person. three persons there. Can, can I answer the question, sir? <laughs> then it's going to go to, oh, you interrupting, and now you're going to, listen, we be talking more than me on here. I'm, I'm barely saying anything. I'm just repeating what he's saying. That's all. One God, three people. Now I'm asking them to find it. Then it's, oh, but well, you're interrupting me. That's what they always do. These are these are uh, uh, little kid tactics, man. Without interrupting. I'm just looking for the three persons that you Just find the scripture. 
Never mind all your talking and philosophy and what you do. Just find the Holy Scriptures that I can see and observe one God, three people. And let me tell you something. I will turn Trinitarian tomorrow if they can find me one scripture that says one God, three people. I'm going to show you. But you what the, which is a clear contradictional statement. One God, three people is a clear contradiction. You believe in one God, but there's three people. You got to allow... You Sometimes thoughts, I have deeper thoughts that allow more than two words to come out, so you gotta give me time. You know, so, so the Bible you clearly says, I'll we'll give you all the time you need. You're not giving me any time. You keep interrupting. Let me talk. Uh, the Bible clearly says that there is one person. Oh, sorry. One, uh, one, one, one being of God. There's only one God. <laughs> let me, let me that was funny. You're not giving me any time. You keep interrupting. Let me talk. Uh, the Bible clearly says that there is one person. Oh, sorry. One person, though. <laughs> They get all flustered. When, when a man gets flustered, he starts to uh, lose his train of thought. When he starts to get pushed on his beliefs, and you start to realize uh, uh, somebody might know more than me. Now I'm, now, I'm starting to get, now I'm starting to get nervous. So you're seeing the nervousness in him. When uh, one, one, one being of God, there's only one God. But the assumption that Unitarians and people like you make is that that one is not uni it's, it's only unipersonal, unipersonal, meaning that there's only one person. Bible does, the, the, the term one akkad actually has a plural uh, unity. Uh, All this stuff is just annoying. I don't care about no one akkad, one plurality. What, what the hell is he talking about? All I ask him to do is find me one scripture that says one God, three people. I mean, this is what they believe. And if you believe something, you got to find it in the Holy Scriptures. I don't say something when I'm talking about God and I don't back it up with Holy Scriptures. Back up what you say with Holy Scriptures. It's a whole bunch. And stop letting these people fool you. Stop letting these people talk, uh, uh, use good words and fair speeches and deceive the hearts of the simple, as the scripture says. God says to mark and avoid fools like this. You can roll your head and mock him, yeah. But I mean, just find the scripture, man. That's all we're looking for. I'm, I'm defining my position. I'm actually using scripture. I know your position. We don't need you to educate us on your position. We know your position. You believe in one God, three. I mean, this is his channel. They all know what he believe in. I know what he believe. In. I don't need to uh, uh, go over the same thing. Uh, you need to go in this whole spiel that you've been taught by a man. I don't care nothing about that. And this is where they get frustrated. Notice, notice he's getting very frustrated. Frustrated because I'm not listening to his man-made theology and all his uh, philosophy. That means nothing to me. All those words he was taught by a man means nothing to me. You keep pushing these people and pressuring them back to the Holy Scriptures. Find what you believe and you chase them around with that word of God. Chase it. Find it. Find it. Find what you say. If you actually listen to what I'm saying, I'm diving. If you actually listen to what I'm saying, I'm actually diving in the text, but you're too immature to sit down and listen for more than two seconds. I'm older than you. You can, be, you can have old fools and old immature people. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, you, you, you can't even rebuke the elder, unfortunately. Okay, anyways, can we get into the text? Can we get into it? Be waiting. That's what I'm defining my position. The Lord our God is one. The Bible... Oh, here we go. Back to the spiel. Back to the spiel. He was taught by some man or he studied all day and listened to a sermon and said, oh, I'm going to say exactly what that said. It's just like, it's just like th this is the problem with these biblical school teachers. Biblical schools. You're giving me nothing. I want spiritual food. Spiritual word of God. I want the word of God. What does the word of God say? Never mind what you think or what you've been taught. But he, it don't take a genius to know what they believe. One God, three people. I've asked it numerous times. Find it. Now, I'm like, well, man, if you ain't got no scripture, why you believe it? That's why I'm sitting there with my hand on my, my palm on my head like, come on, man. Just get me to the scriptures. Don't give me the same spiel over and over again. So that there is one God. The assumption you make is that that one is one of unipersonal rather than uh, plurality of unity, which is what the Bible is speaking about. The Bible also says... Nothing that says plural, that God is plural. In fact, if, if God was plural, that means it would be God's. So there's no plural in there. Uh, many scriptures that go into I, even I am Lord. I, I am this, I am that, I am the alpha, I am the omega, I am the beginning, I am the, not no we. That there is, that husband and wife become one, same Akkad, 
but but we know that that is not one person in that marriage. Now this is just foolish. We all know that a man and a woman are two people. When they become one flesh, that means when they're married, that's a covenant. I mean, I don't again, this is theology. This is philosophy. It I mean, it really irritates me just sitting here listening to that crap. You know? I got to listen to this crazy mess to try to convince people that God is two because marriage it become one flesh. That don't mean that they're one uh, people. That means that they're two people. There's still two people and, and there's only one God. You believe that there's one God, but yet you tell me there's three persons or three people. Man, the Trinity is a damnable doctrine. Some of y'all need to get out of this. This came from the Catholics, y'all. This didn't come from the word of God. And this is why they can't explain it in the scriptures. And they explain it through man-made teachings, which God condemns. So, so the word of God can speak about uh, uh, plural, plural unity, plural, plurality of persons, yet God is one, one being, one essence. Uh, so moving on. If God is one, he can't be three. The Bible obviously says that the Father is God. That's not in debate. I've never heard anyone deny that. I think we would agree there. So, this, so the debate comes into, is the Son and the Spirit God? Well, the Bible clearly says in John... He just wants to keep ranting on. Let me tell you, so I don't care about nobody channel or nobody who they think they are. Uh, and we're going to get into it. He's going to leave because uh, 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 we have to be lower than him because it's his show. I don't care nothing about his show. One, that the Word is God. Uh, passages like John 8, uh, Jesus is the I Am. Uh, Colossians 1. Jesus is the creator of all things. Uh, and now he's making my argument. One God. One God. What's his name? Jesus. Numerous passages like the oh, Revelation 1. Jesus is the almighty God. Titus 3, 5. He's God and Savior. Uh, uh, First what Timothy Isaiah 2. 9, 6. We call him the everlasting. Oh, man. Look, look at the eyes. Look at the eyes. Uh, Isaiah. No, not Isaiah 6. Why can't you take me to some other scripture? Not Isaiah 9, 6. So, so, we, so we agree Jesus is God. No, we don't agree because you say Jesus is God, but he's not Father God. You don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Let's get that straight. You're like a <laughs> I, I'm over here demonstrating Jesus is God. No, you're not because what you when I tell you, I ask you if he's Father God, you say no, he's not. Yes, Jesus is and not. And the scriptures and Jesus calls him. How can Jesus be God but not Father God? How many fathers and how many gods is there? They don't even see the clear contradiction in their own statements. And that's what's sad about this. Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ is God. Is he Father God? No. The everlasting Father. So, so what you're referring to in Matthew, I'm oh, sorry. He's running over to uh, Isaiah 9 6. He's going to try to explain it. He probably got some notes on there where it tells him this and that and all this other stuff. Man, this is a Trinitarian's worst nightmare, taking them to Isaiah 9 6. Because let me tell you something, they hate. They deny it, everlasting Father. Watch all the lies fly out of their mouth. Watch this. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6. These are attributes of the Son that Jesus has. These are not <laughs> actual. This is not speaking that Jesus is the Father. The, the Hebrew there it can actually be turned to be translated also as the, the Father of Hebrew. Man, the King James Version translated the Hebrew. What, there's 52 of the best scholars in the game of Hebrew messed it up? Don't you know back then in the King James Version, if they didn't come up with the same thing, they was off with their heads, and they were separated into different rooms. So the King James Version, one of the most translated, and he uses the ESV, NIV, all these corrupt versions. And in fact, if you got an ESV right now, go look up Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, and see if you can find it. And there's many other scriptures like that that are just missing. Um, uh, but again, be careful with teachers. Like this is a young kid that learned from, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Lucifer, I call him. Uh, what's his name? Uh, White. Forget his forget his first name, but uh, uh, he he's the one that started all this Trinitarian crap. Uh, he's one of the the people that that run hard with it. Dr. James White, that's his name. I call him Dr. Lucifer. Uh, but man, we 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 have exposed him. We have exposed him already. If he knew who I was on here, uh, because when I expose people, I don't expose them with my face. Uh, uh, because I can't do it as screen recording, or or if, if I could, I would. But uh, um, uh, he only knows me by my voice, and what's sad is that he's not picking up on my voice. And it's good because once he picks up on my voice and who I am and what I've done, exposed him. Because 
that video is still out there. In fact, look it up. Uh, eternity. Yeah, Jesus has the same eternity as the Father. That's not in question at, at all. You got this. My brother. He's got the same attorney as the father. Like there's two gods. There's, there's God, there's God, the father, and there's Jesus sitting next to him. Or there's, uh, he, Jesus is a little lower God than him. That don't make, man, this stuff is crazy. I can't believe people actually believe in this stuff. I mean, when I, when I was young, I believed in Santa Claus because I was lied to. But when I got older, I found that it was a lie and I did my research and I, and I learned in the scriptures that there is no Santa Claus. It's Satan Claus. And he's trying to make himself into Santa Claus. So it's the same thing with the Trinity, man. When you grow up, you don't believe in the Trinity. Uh, when you grow up uh, uh, and, you, and, you, and you're not living off little baby food and you're not a little baby Christian no more, you start to get off, wing off these false doctrines you've been taught, like women preachers or uh, 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 baptism in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because uh, it says baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. And uh, you can't be a drunk and be a Christian. You can't uh, sin and be a Christian. A lot of these things we've been taught uh, in, in, in the church and by these church fathers and by the, all these uh, man-made theologies and stuff like that never came from God. And I encourage everyone, just look up where the Trinity uh, came from. It came from the third century by the Catholics. Look it up. By Father to Trilly or you know, whatever his name is. I don't even care. It doesn't even mean nothing. And, it, and, it, and they noted that nobody really believed in what he believed in. You know what I'm saying? It's the Catholics that have been trying to change the word of God and trying to change you. And that's through the devil. The devil's the one that changes it. They're the ones that changes the baptism formula from Jesus Christ to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're the ones that told you that there's one God, three people, this Trinity God. It's all orchestrated by the devil. And yet these people, and again, People that are not spiritual or don't know spiritual things and not been taught by God but taught by man, this is what they're going to teach. They're going to teach man-made doctrines. But once you grow up in the faith, and just because somebody, everyone believes it doesn't make it right. I want to make that very clear. So there was 12 apostles, and it was only 12 people that believed in Jesus, apostles. And there was millions that believed in Hitler uh, that wanted to kill uh, the Jews. So, uh, uh, man, be careful with these type of people, man. Everlasting Father, His name shall be called. I, I just explained that. Almighty God, you got no problem calling Him God, but when it comes to Father God, the Antichrist spirit, and you say, no, 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 I can't call Him. Even though Isaiah nine six says He is the everlasting. Oh, Father. I remember you. Yeah, here we, you're, you're the guy who. Here we go. Here we go. Said theology. Now, now he's, he's gonna run. Theology. The one that is, your butt. <laughs> Well, no, not, not that part. You're the one who said theology is uh, is not uh, biblical. <laughs> yeah, theology can be found nowhere in the Word of God. In fact, the theology of God is the study of the Word of God. That's absurd. <laughs> no, you... it's not. The study of one thing it doesn't say study of the Word of God. Um, uh, theology is a uh, man-made interpretation of God, meaning they learn God through their man-made philosophies and theologies and ideologies. It's not scriptures, because if it was scriptures, we would find the Trinity. What he's talking about. If it was scripture, we could find that Jesus Christ is not Father God. Wait, you, well, you don't study the Word of God. You study okay. man-made theology. So, so I'm going to show you how Jesus is not the Father, right? Okay, you ready? All right, show okay. me. Right. I can't, I can't without the play. bolstering, without the without the antics, please, please. I don't want to do Don't worry about me. Just worry about finding his scriptures, all right? Matthew chapter 3. Tell me I, I can hack and not hack. Well, yes, I can. On my show, I can hack. I don't care nothing about you. All right, well, this is what we do. You all should right. know that. That's where, that's where they run every single time. Every single time. He ain't got no scripture. He ain't got no way to explain none of this. They run. They don't want you to, they don't want to look bad in front of their people. They don't want to look like they wrong. It's the pride in them. Pride. Pride is the downfall of all men. See, he thinks he got it all figured out until he comes to somebody like me that questioning him on his faith. Not no weak Christian. Not no, uh, 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 uh. I mean, this is what they do. They expose people that are not spiritual. Or they expose people that that, that that think they have it all figured out. I mean, that, 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 that they really don't know nothing. They're just baby Christians. Come do that with me. Come come act tough in front of me. We'll break that pride immediately. Uh, but again, this is what you see with these people. I'm going to go to some scriptures so that y'all see this. I got no interest to sit there with a fool all day. Um, I got people I got to help and talk to. Um, uh, I already know what he believes in and all this other stuff. I knew he was going to run once he re realized I put when I put my camera on them. Colossians 2 verse, uh, 
Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. What is philosophy? The study of fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, and discipline. All that stuff, man, thinking and reasoning, ideology, wisdom, man-made wisdom and knowledge. I don't care about your man-made wisdom, uh, 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 wisdom and knowledge. I care about what God said in the Holy Scriptures. And y'all should too. Beware lest any man spoil you, destroy you through philosophy and vain deceit. Meaningless talking. Meaningless talking. Meaningless deceit. After the traditions of men. After the rudeness of the world. Church fathers, like he said. And not after Christ. That's all he brought up was what the church father said and what this person said and what that i don't care and not after christ for in him in jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily you ever heard a fool say that uh uh uh, uh the godhead is one god three people i just read you that jesus christ is the fullness of the godhead look what god says but avoid foolish questions avoid them and genealogies and contentions contention and striving about the law for they are unprofitable and vain a man that is a heretic a man that is someone that goes against god's word like these theologians god says after the first and second warning reject knowing that he that is such is subverted now you say kurt what does subverted mean Meaning he's undermining the power and authority of God's word. And that's what he was doing. Undermining God's word and authority. Using a man-made teaching over God's word. Subverted and sinneth. He's already once saved, always saved. We exposed him already. But we'll expose him twice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, being condemned of himself. He condemns himself by undermining God's word and authority. Look what God's word says. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. But speak though the, though the things which become sound doctrine. Speak the word of God, brother. We don't care about your opinions and your theology and your ideology and all that other stuff. Or what some man taught you. It doesn't mean nothing to me nor to a biblical debate. You say, Carrie, why don't you just have a conversation with That's not my job. This is a God-appointed appointment. It's no accident that God put me on there first. And I get this a lot with these false teachers. Dory Love, David Lynn, all these people. Man, we get them all in the, in the, in the uh, 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 first. Uh, 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 with Sam Shamu, all these people, man. God leads me to to warn these people. And yet they never heed to the warning. Never. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So I'm going to go by what God said because God breathed this. All right. This is God's word. And I believe it. And it's profitable for doctrine. So it's profitable for doctrine. Y'all. Our belief got to be written. If it's not written, your belief is made up for reproof, for uh, uh, correction. So to correct somebody, you correct them with the word of God. That's what I was doing. Find what you believe in the word of God. If you can't find it, you're a liar. For instruction in righteousness. Look what God says. That the man of God may be perfect. Truly furnished unto all good work. And this is what I get with people when they don't spell hallelujah right. It's hallelujah. Not hallelujah. There ain't no J's in the Hebrew. First of all. Uh, 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 to put that in more perspective. Uh, but 2 Corinthians. Uh, uh, but that's just. It's spelled A-L-L-E. Uh, 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 matter of fact, I'm about to spell it wrong myself. Hold on. A L L E L U I A. Notice it's in the Word of God. Watch this. Hallelujah. Right. Now let's look up Hallelujah. And if it if it ain't written, why are we adding on to the Word of God? God says you can curse yourself by doing that. Hallelujah can be found nowhere in the Word of God. No direct matches. So why are we saying something that ain't in the Word of God? Why are you pronouncing something? And spelling something that ain't even in the word of God. It's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah. So it's hallelujah. Spelled and said as it is written.
And again, some of the best Hebrew scholars in the game, not your ones you got right now that's a dead, that don't even, they're using Google. 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. According as it is written. We have in the same spirit. If we're going to have the same spirit of Christ, same God in us, we got to go by what is written. And, and if you did it wrong, you got to do it the way God told you to do it. Not the way you want to do it. Romans 8, 11, 8. According as it is written. So if you cannot find the Trinity, and you cannot find one God, three people, and you cannot find triune, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't you know that these people are cursing themselves? Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that hear the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So keep playing around adding on to God, telling him he's one God, three people. I'm sure God is just pissed off hearing that. You know that had to come from the devil. Look what God says. Ye shall not add unto the word. Very clear. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Neither shall you diminish aught from it. Meaning you don't get to uh, add on to the scriptures. And not only that, you don't get to take away from the scriptures. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. God is very serious about God warned us about these people. Galatians 1 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. There's going to be some that trouble you, call you a heretic because you don't believe in no trinity. Going to tell you, you're going to lose your salvation because of the trinity, the, the, the devil's trinity, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. If it's called the gospel of God or the gospel of Christ, it's also called the gospel of Father God. Foolish people. Galatians 1 8, but though we or any angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that that then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So whatever the apostles gave us, whatever Jesus gave us, and whatever the Old Testament gave us, we go by that. We go by that. We go by the words of God. If this is why people are so confused and why there's so much strife in, 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 in the churches. Because all these man-made religions are teaching everything but the doctrine. And they're fighting with one another. Instead of just going by what is written. Humble thyself. You know what? I can't find the Trinity, Kurt. I can't find one God, three people. I can't find where Jesus Christ is not the everlasting Father. So, I'm going to go ahead and humble myself. You know what? I'm wrong. You right. And we're going to go by that. And this is the problem. God warned you again. Galatians 1.9. And as we said before. So say I now again. So he's telling you twice to let you know how uh, messed up this is. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received. Who did we receive it from? Jesus. Who did we receive from Jesus? The apostles sent it. Let them be accursed. These people are cursed. It's no wonder God never revealed himself who he is. He say that Jesus Christ is God. But when you dig deeper with these people, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is Father God. If a man can't confess that Jesus Christ is Father God, he got the Antichrist spirit. It says it specifically in Isaiah 9, 6, John 14, 17. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And if he's God, he got to be God the Father. Get away from this Trinitarian uh, uh, crap. His belief came from Google. Look, I'm going to show you what he said. It was not until later in the first, fourth century that the distinctiveness of the three, the three, I got my air quotes up again, and their unity, like God, like God is needed to unity with somebody, were brought together in a single orthodox doctrine of one essence and three persons. So it came out in the third and fourth centuries, y'all. These ain't come from God's word. Just look it up. Matter of fact, we just gonna do a little study. Let's look it up, Trinity. Let's see if the Trinity is in the word of God. Let's see this, let's see. Let me just show you. Oh, nothing. What about triune? Triune gotta be in there. 
Try you got to be in there. I mean, they talk about it all the time. Try you got to be in there. Uh, nope. What about one God and three persons? Let's see that. Three persons. This is what they believe. Even though the plural version of persons is people. One God, three persons. Okay. Can we find that in scripture somewhere? And the persons were 16,000. Nope, I don't see it. For there is no respect of persons with God. Well, that goes for our search. Believing in something that's not even in the word of God. Here's a Trinitarian famous verse. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, some people will say three in one. I think the NIV and the ESV and all the other ones, the corrupt versions, say three in one. If it said three in one, that would make the Trinity true. But it doesn't say that. It says three are one. It doesn't say three are three. All right? Uh, uh, and these three are one. So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one. Well, who is the Father? Jesus. Who is the Word? Jesus. Who is the Holy Ghost? Jesus. Let's show you where Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Matthew one twenty. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Fear not to take unto thee, thy, thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the little baby inside of Mary is the Holy Ghost. And they'll still deny it. Oh, they'll say Holy Ghost is another God. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So we know that the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, which lives inside of us and dwells in us, which is called God's spirit or the spirit of Christ, however you want to call it, whom the father will send in my name. So Jesus says the Holy Ghost will be in his name. Whom the father will send in my name. So the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. Where's the spirit of the Holy Ghost going to dwell in you? Even the spirit of truth. There's only one spirit, right? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. We know when we got the Holy Ghost, we got Christ living in us. And if you're still confused, 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is that spirit. Who's the Lord? Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord, is he not? Now the Lord is that spirit. Let him know it's uppercase. Again, these are spiritual things. None of these people going to understand. And if you try to teach it to them, be like trying to speak uh, 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 English to a Chinese person that don't speak uh, English. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Freedom from what? Sin. You're still confused about that. Let's keep going. Romans 8, 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Uppercase. Then you know who it is. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Notice he calls it the spirit of God here. But look what's going to say in the next verse down. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Jesus Christ is the spirit of God. And if Christ be in you, the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is a life because of righteousness. That's why Jesus said, I'm the life. Because when you got his spirit living and dwelling in you, you have life, you have peace. You have all these things. But one thing you really got is that your body is dead and you are no longer sinning. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, so the spirit is not limited to a body. Notice that. It's omnipresent. It can be in your house, my house, in hell, heaven, fill up the hev heavens and earth as God said. It can be anywhere. Raised up Jesus, talking about that flesh and blood body. See, people say, well, that's two gods right there. Fool, from the dead dwelleth in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal by bodies by his spirit. God's telling you that you will not be left there. The body going to return to the ground and the spirit that God, that God gave is going to return back to God. Uh, but notice that it says bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It's the spirit of God that picks you up. That lifts you up, right? The Holy Ghost, Christ's Spirit. I just want to po point this verse out. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. For so in interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of who? 
of who, what is this God's name? What, what is our Father God's name? Of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's see if Peter had a different doctrine. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Spirit of who? Christ. Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. However you want to call it, the Lord Spirit, as one scripture says. This is why we have the Word of God studies, man, so that people are no longer ignorant to the Word of God. Man, I encourage everyone to come up out of there. For unto us, this is where the scripture where he ran from. This is where Jesus is called the Everlasting Fathers, which is one of his names that he denies. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. I got no time to be sitting here playing around with these little man-made thinking and all this other stuff. Either we're going to get to the point, find your scriptures, or go running. Pick one. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. They say, well, Prince of Peace means there's got to be a king in front of there. No. Princes were uh, 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 kings of, of nations, of Israel, and certain like that. And they were ahead by the king, uh, uh, certain kings. And um, um, they took over land. So he is the prince of Israel. He, he's the one that came from Israel. So it lets you know that this son is going to be given what, is, what his title is going to be in Israel. Uh, so the everlasting father, man, I mean, how can you deny that? So Jesus Christ is the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. It says right here, the father, the word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, one God. These are titles of this one God. Like you have titles as a father or a son or whatever it is that you uh, 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 call yourself. You have titles, mister or whatever it is. These are his titles. He's a father. He's the word because it came breath inspired by God. God made all things through his breath by just speaking things into existence. And the Holy Ghost, which is his spirit, in order to do anything, it's by the spirit. That's why Jesus said, I can do nothing on my own. But by the Father, the invisible Spirit of God. That's the only reason why Jesus is God. Because the invisible Spirit of God dwells in the body, in the image of the spiritual body of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word is God, y'all. The Word is God. Never, never forget that. And the Word was God. God. Now, let's see what Jesus is now speaking about a fleshly matter. But let's see what that fleshly is also called. Not just everlasting Father, mighty God. What is the Son of God called? Son of God and Son of Man are titles for flesh and blood. And the Word was made flesh. That's Jesus. And dwelt among us. So God the Father was made uh, uh, manifested in the flesh. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory as the only one begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Only thing you can find truth in is God. Grace comes from God. You say Kirk, Christ never called himself Father God. Fool. John 14 7. If you had known me you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So not only when you know Jesus, you know the Father, you know uh, you have seen him. Here's Philip. He's confused. Philip, show us unto him, Lord. Show us the Father. And this is sufficient with us after he just told him who he was. John 49, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me, have seen the Father. And how will show us thou then show us the Father? Here he is mocking him saying, I'm telling you, I'm talking to you, I'm speaking to you right now as Father God. And you saying, show us the Father. What? Now here's Jesus speaking as flesh, but showing you that he's God at the same time. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? So notice Jesus say, I am in the Father. I am in the Father. Not just the Father's in me. But I am in the Father, letting you know who he, who he really is. 
The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me. He do the works. So Jesus gave you two interpretations of who he is. While you might see me in flesh, flesh is not God. What lives in me is God. And when I get back to the Father, or uh, when I get back to the uh, 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 to heaven, you're going to see who I am, Father God. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. One scripture calls it the judgment seat of God. So in conclusion, my young brothers and sisters, that Trinity thing is a witchcraft thing. In fact, let me show you that. This is what the symbol is for Trinity. It's like 666 if you ask me. I, I mean, I see it clear as day. But let me show you what it means in witchcraft. But be careful with these people, man. They call it the Holy Trinity. A bunch of liars. This came from the Catholics, y'all. This is what it's really called, Tricrinta, I think it's called. I can't specifically say that. But it comes from the Irish. It comes from witchcraft. All right? It's it's something that has intertwined, and it's on your word of God, Some, especially in the New King James Version, because they're notorious for the uh, Trinity. Or the Celtic Trinity knot. Get some more information on the history of this uh, uh, witchcraft symbol. Know what you got going on. The devil is very tricky. Look what it says here. The symbol has been interpreted as the representation of the Catholic Trinity. Notice it says the Catholic Trinity. That's where it came from, Catholics. Man, the Catholic religion has infiltrated uh, uh, these Christian churches and they believe a lie. And it's sad. And Catholic comes from Roman, Roman Catholics. Notice it says here, it is, uh, let's keep reading. Especially since the Celtic revival of the 19th century. The original intentions by the early medieval artists is known in experts. Notice it says medieval, medieval, medieval artists back in the 1600s. Warned against overinterpretation. It is, however, regularly used as a Trinitarian symbol in contemporary Catholic icon graphic. Graphy. I can't even say that word. Uh, man, these are two. I mean, this is stuff is just foolish to me. Notice it says, look here, it says, Buddhist tradition. They didn't put Buddhist tradition and now your uh, Catholic uh, Trinity symbol. But you fools got this tattooed on you. Man, you didn't put witchcraft on yourself. Look, it says, the triquinta. I can't even say that word either. <laughs> One thing I'm, you'll never see me is in spelling bees or anything in the pronouncing words. Trinity was also used as a symbol of the charm ones and their collective power of three. Power of three. Do you see how foolish we come? Look what it says. The Trikrinta on the Book of Shadows, that spells, would be seen to fracture and pull apart when their bond was temporarily broken by a demon. Y'all have no idea what y'all dealing with. Y'all have witchcraft in your house. Three gods. In fact, three three things, three devils is used a lot. It's pagan. Yeah, look. He got a poster, witchcraft, right on your thing. And y'all don't even know it. Again, I call these God-appointed appointments to warn this young man. Man, we hope this dude come to Christ. We hope this dude starts believing and stop teaching things that are not in the word of God. But again, he has been trained by James White. You can just tell. All his, uh, all his words and everything he speaks comes from a theological trying to sound smart and educated instead of just saying what the Holy Scriptures say. We pray that this man come to Christ. We pray that everyone gets changed and saved by what we're saying here, Lord. Uh, we just, man, we, we, we ask for your help with this brother here, Lord Jesus Christ, and anyone that follows this man. They're on the way to hell, but a lot of people just want this stuff. They want to feel like they're smart and they're educated with man-made knowledge instead of just getting in the scriptures and learning what God says yourself. The Holy Ghost should be your teacher, right? Holy Ghost taught me. Now, again, this is not saying that there shouldn't be preachers out there that teach and preach God's word. That'll show you uh, things that God has shown them. Nothing wrong with that, learning uh, in word of God studies and stuff like that. But in all actuality, I'm pointing you to the word of God. I'm not pointing you to James White. I'm not pointing you to ideology and theology and philosophy and all this other crazy stuff. I don't care about it. I'm pointing you to the word of God. It's the word of God is what saves people, not what we say. Love you all. God bless in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I can't again. If you got any false teacher and they drop that link, send it to me. Send it to me so I can go rebuke them and, 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 and talk to people and show people the truth. I love this stuff. I love standing up for God. They're going to run. One script, uh, again, in Proverbs 20, the wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are as bold as lions. I'm going to chase them down and guess what they're going to do? Run. You'll never see me out here running from people. Running from a, a debate with somebody that got a lot of followers. We want to show them the truth. I'm not scared of nobody. Bring your best YouTube preacher that is that's speaking a, a, a lie and let me get a hold of him. Please. It's my job. Don't you go out there trying to rebuke people and you don't know the word of God. Know the word of God. Then you can take on any of these people. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Lord. Oh, there's another one.